Hey friend, welcome to my channel Karina Lude where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. Now let's get into this video. Today I'm very excited because we are talking about the very beautiful and charming Dita Von Teese. I think maintaining mystery is important. When I'm with a man, I don't let him see everything. I keep my feminine voice about me. You know, a lot of guys have that thing like, I like you with no makeup on, I like you natural, and I, I get that, and I am that way uh, in private. You can't dictate to a woman what should make her feel sexy, and it's like, if I feel sexy in black stockings and garter belts, then that's what it is for me. I love her aesthetic, okay? She reminds me of everything that is the 1940s and 1950s, because in my soul, resonates with the fashion of that era, the glamour, the charming nature of everything. And I say Dita is charming because even in her vocabulary and how she articulates herself when she talks, she uses very charming words. You guys know I always talk about speech and the art of speech on my second channel, The Mental Gems link in the description and I just love how she talks how she carries herself with the grace class and elegance of the 1940s and 1950s era in our modern day. I wanted to start with her childhood because I really like her story. She's one of the first people that you find that I've broken down at least on this channel that was born an original blonde but went dark. <laughs> Most people are born with darker hair and they go blonde, but she went to the far extreme, even with her eyebrows and everything. Dita Von Teese was born in West Branch, Michigan on September 28th, 1972, the second of three daughters. The 1940s and classic vintage fashion are a particular source of inspiration for Von Teese. Her mom encouraged this from a young age by encouraging her to play dress up. Her mother enjoyed classic Hollywood films from the golden age and Von Teese took after her and became enamored with the heiress actresses, particularly Betty Grable. When describing her hometown, Dita says, it's a universe away from the colored clegg lights of Hollywood and Paris. But on weekend afternoons, my mom and I had a front seat on a rocket ship to those faraway worlds by way of the old movies, staring the most glamorous creatures. Betty Grable, Mae West, Carmen Miranda, Marlene Dietrich, they were our muses, end quote. Her father was a machinist, mechanic, and her mother was a manicurist. She is of English, Scottish, Armenian, and German heritage. She started dancing ballet at a young age, and by the time she was 13, she was performing solos for a local ballet company. Despite her early aspirations to join the ballet world, Von Teese claims, by the time I was 15, I was as good as I'd ever be. In latter performances, she began incorporating en point into her burlesque routines. Her father's job transfer brought the family from Michigan to Orange County in California. University High School in Irvine, California was where Von Teese received her education. As a teen, Von Teese's mother took her shopping for her first cotton bra and presented her with a pair of wrinkled, flesh-colored pantyhose in a plastic egg. Von Teese says she was let down by her birthday present because she wanted lacy clothes and stockings like the ones she saw in her father's Playboy magazines. Because of this, she became increasingly interested in lingerie. She said, and I quote, I didn't have money like a lot of my friends, so I always had to work. I would shop for vintage because my friends would have all the cool jeans and sneakers and stuff, and I never got to have that sort of thing. So I started buying vintage because I felt like I could emulate designer looks that I liked that I'd seen in Vogue, end quote. Von T started dyeing her hair black and dressing like an old Hollywood star, corsets and bullet bras and vintage suits. That's when my life changed and where I felt like I finally had my confidence, she says. When she was 15, she got a job as a sales girl at a lingerie shop and worked her way up to buyer. Ever since, Von Teese has favored high fashion items of undergarment like corsets and basque with a full stocking complement. Von Teese's college major was historical costuming and she wanted to be a film stylist. She often designs and copyrights her own photo shoots because she has a background in costume design. Von Teese got her now iconic beauty mark tattooed on her left cheek when she was 18 years old. She went to a exotic dance club for the first time at the age of 19 and according to her first book she was hired there she was shocked to see that the other exotic dancers were using the same tired routines so she decided to add some vintage and fetish flair to her act von Teese had one of the earliest fetish websites where she posed for bdsm monitoring that word for youtube <laughs> but she also did 
pinup illicit pinup photos. After distinguishing herself from the bleach blonde crowd by 1994, she began modeling for Playboy back when people used to buy magazines, as she put it. Now, as far as her career, Dita Von Teese chose her name as an homage to the silent film star Dita Parlo. She needed a surname for her breakthrough December 2002 Playboy cover, so she picked Von Trees out of the white pages. She now goes by the misspelled name of Von Tees, which she got from Playboy. It didn't take long for Von Tees to transition from exotic dancer to burlesque revivalist. As word of her Playboy fame spread, she was invited to perform at more and more exotic dance clubs across the country. I used to do burlesque and strip clubs, so I don't have the same outspoken need to tell people that what I'm doing is different from what illicit dancers do, she said. I'm not out to change anyone's preconceived notions of, you know, stripping. <laughs> I have no intention of suggesting that I am superior to, say, a stripper. The term stripper itself, she explains, was created during the 1930s, the golden age of burlesque. She argues that the word is not offensive because of her personal viewpoint, that it has no negative connotation. She said, I don't mind if other people call me an artist, but I'm certainly not going to do it. It's too pretentious. So her signature painted eyes, thickly penciled brows, swipe of crimson lipstick, and jet black hair have made Von Tees famous. She says, I've settled on a signature style and I won't move from it because it's authentically me and was designed by me from the ground up. It's possible that it's a one trick pony, but in that regards, it's a clever trick all the same, end quote. Von Tees states that she never uses a stylist and I love that the most about her. She said, the one time I hired a stylist, they picked up a pair of my 1940 shoes and said, these would look really cute with jeans. I immediately said, you're out of here. She does her own makeup and dyes her naturally blonde hair black at home. She always says, and I quote, doing it myself is a matter of integrity and pride. I look forward to stepping out of the world and honestly stating, yes, I did this. I love the confidence it gives me. I would feel a fraud otherwise. Truth is, it takes less time than a stylist for me to do it myself it is also so much more fun why would i deny myself of such pleasure end quote i love this because listen i will always do my own hair my own makeup i love sitting down and get that done i love how she's just so unapologetically feminine because i know as soon as you get a little money People usually go to stylists and do their makeup, but it's refreshing to hear when a celebrity is like, I sat down, I did my hair, I did my makeup, and it actually looks great. So Pilates and dressage are two of Von T's regular workouts. Dita doesn't believe in dieting. Instead, she has a set of disciplines and place to keep her healthy. She told Vogue in 2014 that she likes to start her day by drinking a large glass of water, preferably with fresh lemon, after seven to nine hours of great sleep. She also does Pilates every morning. She said, I get dressed in my Pilates uniform or black capri pants, fitted black or white t-shirt. I lay flats in either a coat or a skirt. I always do a sleep of powder and matte red lipstick and always a chignon. And of course, ideally, I'd have sex too, end quote. Though Dita isn't vegan, she told Bon Appetit in 2015 that she likes to eat vegan before 6 p.m. so that I can feel free to indulge when I want to. I love good vegan restaurants and I'm interested in consuming less animal products. Plus, I have more energy when I don't eat meat. She also tries to be totally vegan at least three days a week. I'm into making my smoothie every morning, which is 70% greens, 30% fruit, and I blend it up with water. That's my breakfast, she told Hello Magazine. For lunch, I have a salad or a vegetarian soup, and for dinner, maybe a quinoa or brown rice kind of dish. I always have a few go-to meals like eggs, avocado, and millet bread. I love toasted gluten-free bread with avocado and truffle or smoked sea salt on top. I like to baste eggs in broth or cook them in remkins with sauté mushrooms and herbs i like to make big pots of kombucha squash or parsnip soup and i always have arugula and cherry tomatoes so that i can make a simple salad with a touch of rice vinegar and olive oil and some pine nuts she also loves spicing up her food with a gourmet spicy mustard after 6 p.m. on occasions, when she's not caring about her diet too much, she really indulges. My vice is having really good tacos with a nice smoky shot of shipping mezcal. I also occasionally love an In-N-Out burger or a 3 a.m. hotel room service burger after a show. She told Bon Appetit, she also loves a good drink, but not a sugary one. I love a properly made, dirty, dry vodka martini, she said. I don't like drinks that are too sweet, and I don't like to drink my calories. Her home, a two-door revival mansion in the Hollywood Hills, 
Hills is decked out in antique taxidermy, a pub and a glass case containing Betty Page old fetish shoes from the early 20th century. Montice claims she is afraid of white walls, so she doesn't have any in her home. There's an entire room in her house also dedicated to the shoe collection. You guys, if you guys are interested in seeing how her home looks, which is very unique and very pretty, very 1940s, you guys can see it on AD, Architectural Digest. It's like my favorite channel in here on YouTube, okay? I love seeing how these people decorate their home. She is also a collector of vintage china, particularly egg cups and tea sets, and drives vintage cars. So she used to own a 1939 Chrysler New Yorker. And she said, I live to surround myself with everyday things that are beautiful. I serve my home-baked petite fours on porcelain pedestals and sip tea from flowery teacups, charming gems from my flea market treasure hunts. I keep cosmetic brushes and vintage vase cast like the heads of ladies complete with glamour do's and makeup i always carry a pretty compact maybe one scored for next to nothing on ebay and quote she prefers her backyard also to eiffel tower for you guys who didn't know she said i love having a house with a yard where somewhere i can have a privacy and sit in a garden it's a lifestyle you can't have in certain cities in paris which is my only real experience of living in another major city i found that i had a lot of that stuff taken away i love being surrounded by my atmosphere my antique things and my vintage car it makes me feel closer to another era when beauty and aesthetics were infused into everyday things i couldn't really have that in paris as a tight lady Sir Bronte's gained some notoriety in the fetish community. She had a Warner corset for many years, resulting in a 22 inch waist that can be further laced down to a 16.5 inches over the years Vontese graced the covers of many fetish fabrications like bazaar and marquise midori's book the seductive art of japanese bondage featured her around this time and in 1999 2001 and 2002 Vontese appeared in playboy with a cover photo spread appearing in 2002 she was the cover girl for the 2008 album work 82 by german metal band atrocity she has stated in print i love fetish for its power of transformation and also for its beauty among her heroes of vintage fetish history are John Willie, Betty Page, and Irving Claw. When referring to Von Tees, the media often refers to her as the queen of burlesque because of her many burlesque performances. When Von Tees first took the stage in 1992, she was a pioneer of the neo-burlesque movement. Her long, elaborate dance shows, often based on 1930s and 1940s musicals and films, and what she calls putting the tees back into strip tees. The carousel horse, the giant powder compact, the filigree heart, and the clawfoot bathtub with the working shower head are just some of the props she has used used in her more well-known dances. Her dance with, with feather fans was influenced by the burlesque performer Sally Rand and she was the largest feather fan in the world. You guys would be surprised. Most of her seats are filled with other women. She said, I had a big following among male fetish fans. I started noticing the shift in my audience around 1998. It made me feel like I had more purpose. I started thinking about why so many females were coming to a striptease show. Why am I looking out at an audience of a thousand women with maybe their boyfriends and husbands on their arms and a smattering of gays? Well, there are a lot of gays now, actually more than a smattering, end quote. Some of her burlesque acts have gone down in history books. She once attended a fundraiser for the New York Academy of Art, dressed only in diamonds worth $5 million. In addition, in October 2006, Vontese made history as the first guest star at the Crazy Horse Cabaret Club in Paris. In a Cycle 7 episode of America's Next Top Model from 2006, Vontese led a workshop on sensuality through burlesque dancing and posing for the contestants. In 2006, HarperCollins released Burlesque and the Art of the Tease, Fetish and the Art of the Tease, Vontese's first book in which she shared her thoughts on the development of burlesque. She was dubbed a burlesque superheroine by Vanity Fair. So Strip, Strip Hooray, The Art of the Tees, Dita Von Tees and the Copper Coop in the 2019 Glamonitrix tour, which was postponed due to COVID-19, you know, which will continue in Europe and the UK in 2023, are the four full-length revs that Von Tees have taken on the road around the world. And actually for her Glamonatrix, She's doing a 2023 tour, I believe, that's starting in January in the Canada and North America. So she has several in the United States. I'm going to two of them, but one in America and one in, in Canada. I believe she has a link for the tickets and her link in her Instagram bio. So there are numerous mainstream and adult films in which Fontese has also appeared. She first gained attention for her roles in Andrew Blake's hardcore fetish films, Pinups 2 and Decadence, as well as in a soft, you know, you know, core 
films like Romancing Sarah and Matter of Trust in which she is billed under her real name Heather Sweet. She has appeared in more commercial features such as Delaney's Bishops, The Death of Salvador Dali. She also recently starred in Don't Worry Darling with a special performance and I've seen the movie Don't Worry Darling with Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles, I believe. And it is a mind thriller. It reminds me of The Stepford Wives, which I did a movie breakdown for The Stepford Wives. It reminded me of that without giving any spoilers for you guys. And I do want to review that movie. If you guys are interested, comment below. I'll review that movie for you guys because I think it's a great conversation starter. And she also starred in 2007 St. Francis. In addition, she has appeared in a number of music videos for the episode A Kiss Before Frying of the CBS Police Procedural Drama Series CSI Crime Scene Investigation in January 2011. Bonte's guest starred alongside her friend Eric Zamanda. In a film noir style plot, she portrayed Rita Von Squeeze, a femme fatale version of herself who seduces Greg Sanders, played by Zamanda. In 2021, Vontese made an appearance as Beetroot of the British adaptation The Max Dancer, a Fox TV show. She was the third celebrity to have her identity revealed. Vontese competed in the 11th season of Danser avec les Stars, the French adaptation of Dancing with the Stars in September 2021. Vontese is a regular fixture in the front rows at fashion shows, especially those for designers Christian Dior, Vivian Westwood, Jean-Paul Gaultier, and Marc Jacobs, and has been featured on numerous best dress lists. She has also done catwalk work. She has starred in several campaigns. Along with Eve, Debbie Harry, and Lisa Marie Presley, she was chosen to represent Max Cosmetics' Viva Glam campaign, which is a line of lipsticks and glosses from which all the proceed benefits international AIDS organizations. Many international editions of fashion periodicals have featured Vontese, including Vanity Fair, Vogue, Elle, and many more. Recently, she collaborated with Wonderbra to create a new line of lingerie. Collaborations between Vontese and German Cosmetics company Art Deco resulted in the release of her classic collection in May of 2012. The burlesque performer classic makeup routine was recreated in the form of compact powders, blushers, eye stylers, eyeshadow, mascara, and lipstick. Von Foley is a clothing and lingerie line designed by Von Tees, debuted in 2012. Since 2008, Von Tees has also been developing her own line of perfumes. Her debut, Dita Von Tees, was a good mood setting for glamour, in her words, a mood setting for seduction. Her second perfume was titled Rouge and came out in November of 2012. Both the third, Fleur Tees, and the erotic are designed to set a romantic or erotic mood respectively. As far as her relationships, Marilyn Manson was an avid supporter and subscriber to her site. Though she declined his offer to appear in a music video featuring her dancing, they remained friends and they started dating on Manson's 32nd birthday in 2001 when she showed up bearing a bottle of absinthe. And on March 22, 2004, Manson proposed to his future wife with a 1930s European round cut diamond weighing seven carats. They tied the knot in a small non-religious ceremony on November 28, 2005. The larger ceremony took place on December 3rd at Gottfried Helwain's Castle in Ireland. This event was covered in Vogue. Dita was decked out in a Stephen Jones tricorn hat and a Mr. Pearl corset to complement her Vivian Westwood silk taffeta ball gown. Her footwear was created by Christian Louboutin. As of the 29th of December 2006, Montez has already filed for divorce from Manson, citing irreconcilable differences. On Christmas Eve, Montez did not take anything with her when she left her house and she was unable to reach Manson to tell him she wanted a divorce. In an interview with the Daily Telegraph, Vontee stated, and I quote, I wasn't supportive of his partying or his relationship with another girl. As much as I loved him, I wasn't going to be part of that. Vontee also stated that she gave Manson an ultimatum and said that it didn't work. Instead, it made me the enemy. Vontee did not seek spousal support and expressed no interest in his assets. The news broke for the public and from Manson on his birthday on January 5th, 2007, when he was served the divorce papers. And in an interview in 2016, Vontee said, I was with him for seven years. We were married for only a year. And I feel like getting married was sort of like the kiss of death for us because it was sort of like the nail in the coffin. I felt kind of obliged to go through with the ceremony in a way because there was so much writing on it. Vogue was photographing it and it was in this castle and it was like this theater. I'm not going to beat myself up for being in different relationships and not finding a person I'm with until the end of my days." End quote. And since 2014, Rontese has been dating Adam Rastevich, 
graphic designer and she stays very private with her life still and continues to tour so yeah i really really like me some dita it's like we have our modern day golden age of hollywood starlet <laughs> I wish Hollywood was filled with the glamour, the aesthetic of the looks, just the looks, not the misogyny and all that. But you know, like the hair, the glamour, the gowns. When you look at these award shows, nobody looks good anymore in their elaborate dresses. It's just everybody's looking weirder to get more attention. Some of them look so, you know, where's the glamour with the tuxedos and the gloves and the fur? You know, not real animal fur. You guys know what I'm talking about, the faux fur. <laughs> and the silk dresses and the diamonds. Where is the nicely coiled hair? And you know, I miss that. It just, it feels so warm and nostalgic. And I love whenever Dita's on the red carpet. In my childhood growing up, listen, she always made the headlines for her fashion. I love me some Dita Vontes and I can't wait to see her. If you like the music you're listening to, the link is in the description. Support my brother's new single. I just love this beat. Don't you love this beat? <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. Who else would you guys like to see me do a breakdown on? I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.